Hello and welcome back to Honors Topics in Physics. Uh, more with describing motion. Uh, there's many ways that we can describe uh, motion. We can use words. Um, we can draw pictures or use pictures, kind of like the one below. We can use equations and we can use graphs and we will do a little bit of everything in this class. So uh, it looks like this person has done a, uh, uh, a cartwheel or something. Um, it's a little difficult to tell, but we'll use clearer pictures than that. So motion diagrams are, are kind of like the, um, that, that thing at the, um, the, um, the magic house where it, it, it flashes a light and you leave a shadow on a wall, on a green wall. So uh, this is kind of like you're walking along and the light flashes and you leave a shadow at each, each place where the light flashes. So um, this, this is showing constant speed. And the reason we know that the person is walking at, at a constant speed is because the spacing is even between uh, each of the, the flashes. Um, so if, if they walk, if every second the light flashes, the light flashes, they walk two meters, then their average speed is going to be two meters per second. And they're also traveling a constant uh, two meters per second. So uh, using distance over time, two meters per second. Now, if I look at the, the full the full range here, they, they traveled for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they went 16 meters and it took uh, eight seconds. That's also two meters per second. Um, so again, that's because it was, it was a constant. Uh, how would my picture change if I was walking slower? Would the spacing get further or closer together? Uh, it would get closer together because each time I, f I flash the light, I don't go quite as far as I, as I did uh, in the, the upper picture. So closer spacing means that you're walking slower. So here, what's, what's going on? The, the flash is every, every one second. So the spacing is getting further apart. Assuming he's walking to the right. He's facing to the right. I'm assuming he's not walking backwards. Um, I don't know why his lip is not fully attached, but you know, just ignore that. Um, so his speeding up because the spacing is getting further apart. Okay, if I want to figure out the average speed, I'd look at the total distance traveled divided by the time. Um, and in this case, he's slowing down because the spacing is getting closer. Uh, what's going on in this case? So in this first range, I'm slowing down and then I'm speeding up. Do I come to a stop? Can you tell? you wouldn't be able to tell because the light would just keep flashing. The shadows would overlap. So you wouldn't be able to tell if he came to a stop or not. Um, so, all right. So uh, a little bit more speed. Uh, if you drive 55 miles per hour for an hour, you're going to end up 55 miles away from where you start, from where you started. But, well, assuming you go in a straight line, uh, but where are you going to end up? The answer is we don't know because we don't know which way that you were the way you were headed. So there's two basic types of, of measurements that we, we make in science and two types of numbers that we deal with uh, scalars and vectors. And the difference between them is that a vector has a direction and scalar a scalar does not. So if we just look at 30 centimeters, so let's say uh, that I, I walk 30 centimeters. Um, that just tells me how far I walked. It doesn't tell me which way. Now, if I, uh, if I uh, want to make it a vector, I have to include the direction. So let's say I went 30 centimeters up. Now it's a vector. If I'm driving 55 miles per hour, that's my speed. That's not a vector. But when I say 55 miles per hour north and give it a direction, it's a vector. And the vector uh, quantity of speed is called uh, velocity. So that I've now, I'm now talking about velocity. Um, so which of these would make sense to have a direction uh, associated with it, which would make sense to be a vector? Distance. Uh, we already, that was on the last slide. So uh, if we went, went 10 feet, 10, oh, 10, not 10 feet, 10 meters, 10 meters east, that would make sense. So distance could be a vector. And when, we, when distance is a vector, we call it displacement. Uh, mass, five kilograms to the right. Does that make sense? No, mass doesn't make sense to have direction associated with it. So mass is a scalar. Okay, notice it still has a unit, uh, 55 kilograms. So they both, uh, every number should have a unit, uh, unless it's a special number called dimensionless number. Uh, let's look at temperature. So 30 degrees Fahrenheit uh, up. 
um, 30, 33 degrees Fahrenheit east. That doesn't make sense. And so temperature is a scalar. Speed, uh, 55 miles per hour east. We went, out, we went over this one on the last slide. Uh, it would make sense to have a direction with it, 55 miles per hour east. Uh, and when we do, then it's called velocity. Uh, time, is time a, a vector? Uh, 10 seconds east. Um, you could argue back and forth about it. I don't think we can really say 10 seconds east, but we could say that time moves forward. Um, so I, I think we could say it's a, it's a vector, but I don't know, that might be debatable. Um, force, I pushed with five pounds of force to the right. Okay, and that would make sense. I pushed something to the right. So, um, all right, so the big difference, speed and velocity are similar, but velocity is a vector, meaning it has a direction. Speed is just a scalar. Um, so we've got a, a little car that's, that's moving along at 12 meters per second. The, the vector, the vector um, quantification of that would be 12 meters per second east. And, and so that's, that's the, the main difference that we're going to be looking at. Um, so let's say, um, if you slow down, does your speed change? Sure, your speed changes, okay? Does your velocity change? Yes, velocity is speed and direction. So if, you're, if your speed changes, so does your velocity. Your, both your speed and velocity slow down. Let's say you speed up. Does your speed change? Does your miles per hour change? Sure it does. Okay. So, and if your speed changes, so does your velocity. Okay. Let's say you take a turn without braking. Okay. You take a turn without slowing. Does your speed change? No. Does your velocity change? Yes. Question is, why does your velocity change when you're going around a turn? It is because the direction you're headed is changing. Okay, so if you're going around a turn, uh, your, your direction is constantly changing as long as you're turning. So uh, even if your speed is constant. So in order to move at a constant velocity, there's only one way to do it, to move in a straight line at a constant speed. Well, I take that back. There's another way. You can also be not moving. That's another way to have a constant velocity. But if you're moving, the only way to have a constant velocity is to move in a straight line without turning at a constant speed. Okay, uh, displacement. So we've covered speed and velocity a little bit, and now we want to go through the idea of the difference between distance and displacement. They're similar, but they, they, are, they are different. Displacement is how far you end up from where you started and the direction that you ended up. So it's your, your how far and which way. So that since it's got a, a which way, it's got a direction, that means that displacement is a vector. Uh, so the displacement here would be 3 meters east. So it's got both the magnitude, the 3 meters, and the east um, showing the direction. So distance, on the other hand, is the total length of the path that you cover. So in this case, they went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Why do I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? They went, they went seven meters. I don't know why it says nine meters, so ignore that. Um, so did he travel a total distance of, of uh, seven meters east? No, because, well, he, uh, he traveled west for a little while, so. The, that's just the distance. It's not a vector. It doesn't have a direction. So distance is a scalar. Okay, it's the total length of the path that you follow, and displacement is a vector. Okay, and it's how far you end up from where you started and the direction. So that's the difference between them. Um, so let's say you drive eight meters per second north for four seconds. What is your displacement? Well. I went 8 meters per second. I did that for 4 seconds. That means I'm going to end up 32 meters away from where I started. Okay, so is my displacement 32 meters? Close, but not quite. It's 32 meters with the direction north. So don't forget that. Now, we've been talking about north, south, east, west, up, down, left, right. There's another way that we can talk about um, the, the direction of something. Uh, if we look at a Cartesian coordinate system, uh, so here we've got, uh, which way would you say is the positive x direction, up, down, left, or right? The positive x direction would be to the right. Okay, and what's to the left? The left is the negative x direction. Okay, and what's up? It's the positive y direction. 
okay, and what's down, the, the negative y direction. So we can use a sign, positive or negative, to talk about which way something is going, and we will definitely be doing that. Um, so uh, the displacement, which is going to have a direction, and we're going to be using signs when we talk about it, is, the, uh, is delta x is displacement. And uh, delta, as we mentioned before, means change, and it means final minus initial. Delta means change in. So x2, which is where you end up, minus x1, which is where you started. Okay. So if we were standing on an x-axis, which we commonly do, you know, we superimpose the, 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 the math on, onto the world, but it, it works beautifully. So let's say if we, uh, we started at the zero meter and we ended up at the two meter mark, okay, what was my, uh, what's my displacement? Well, my final position, my final x position would be at the two meters. My initial x position was at the zero meters. So final minus initial, 2 minus 0 is equal to 2 meters. So my displacement is plus 2 meters. What does the plus mean? The plus means that I traveled to the right, or I ended up to the right of where I started. More. So the, um, now again, if I'm at the 0, and this time I travel to the left, okay, my, my, x2, my x2 position is going to be the minus 2. My x1 is still going to be 0. So minus 2 minus 0 gives me minus 2. So that minus 2 means that I traveled in the negative direction, which is to the left, okay, where I ended up a further away in the negative direction from where I started. Um, so let's see. Find the distance and displacement. So my, my displacement is going to be final minus initial, x2 minus x1, which would be 80 minus 20. Um, so that'd be uh, 60 meters. So I traveled 60 meters uh, positive in the positive direction, the plus being my, my sign, my, my, uh, my direction. And my, my, uh, my distance would, uh, would also be the same thing. It would just be 60 meters because that would be the total length of the path traveled. Uh, but it wouldn't be, um, I wouldn't have the, the, sign, the sign per se associated with it. Uh, what's the, the displacement here? Well, um, x2 minus x1, my x2 is 30, my x1 is 60, so 30 minus 60 is minus 30 meters, and my displacement is going to be 30 meters to the left, or 30 meters negative, that's my displacement, and my, my distance would just, be, would just be 30 meters, it wouldn't have the negative associated with it. Okay, let's find the distance and the displacement here. Let's find the distance first. The distance traveled, so I start here at the ten, uh, 0, and I go to the 30, and then I go back to the minus 20. So what's the total distance traveled? So I go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So my distance is 80 meters, and my displacement, 80 meters, uh, and my displacement is final minus initial. So my final is minus 20 minus my initial, which is 0, 0 equals minus 20. So my distance traveled is 80 meters, and my displacement is minus 20 meters in this case. Let's see. Um, all right. Now, just to kind of uh, make a connection between velocity and, and speed here, uh, this, this we've already been given here. Speed is distance over time, or S equals D over T. Now, this line over it means, um, means average. So usually you won't see that line over it, but uh, if you do see a line over something, it means average speed. But that's what this equation, S equals D over T, means is average speed. Um, now, there's an equation for velocity. And the equation for velocity is displacement over time. Now, the symbol for displacement is delta x. So, as we as we mentioned uh, a little bit before, so v bar, v average velocity equals displacement over time. And, and so, the distance, the difference between these is this is displacement, this is distance. Velocity has a direction, and speed does not. So that's those are the main differences between them. Um, so. 
Again, speed is how fast, velocity is how fast in which way. Uh, speed is a scalar, velocity is a vector. Uh, an example of speed would just be five meters per second. Um, when we talk about velocity, we might say five meters per second south. Okay. Um, let's see. So let's figure out our, our velocity, or more specifically, our average velocity in this case right here. So um, the average velocity, I need to put on the drawing here. Average velocity equals displacement over time. Okay? Uh, and displacement equals x2 minus x1. Okay. So our displacement, our this is our x, uh, this is our x one, which is uh, thirty five, we'll say, and our x two, x two is going to equal five. So our delta x equals five minus thirty five, delta x equals minus thirty meters. That's a delta x. It's really, my handwriting is not very good normally, and using this, uh, this screen and the stylus makes it even worse. So our displacement is minus 30 meters. So now to find the average velocity, that is the displacement over the time, which is 5 seconds, 5.0. Um, and uh, technically, this is 30 with a line over it. Uh, not that I'm going to get too hung up on sig figs. I'm not going to be too too worried about sig figs um, from here on out. The, the key thing is that you know that you could figure out the, the correct number of sig figs if you needed it. Just don't give me everything in your calculator. Give me enough to know that you got the right answer, but don't give me everything in your calculator. Okay, so this would be minus 6.0 okay, with correct sig figs meters per second. What does the negative mean as far as velocity? What do you think the negative means with uh, velocity? It means that I was traveling to the left okay, in this case. Um, okay, so basically your velocity and your displacement are both going to have the same direction. So if one is east, the other one's east. If one is positive, the other one's going to be positive. Um, so that'll both be the case so let's say let's say i'm traveling to the left like this will my velocity be positive or negative negative? and my velocity is going to be negative because i'm heading into the negative direction and okay. what about this in this case would my would my uh, velocity be positive or negative uh, it'd be uh so it'd be to the positive because it's going to the right and in, in this case okay um, a car has an initial position of third plus 31 meters. He travels at three meters per second for five seconds. What's his final position? Okay. Um, so let's, let's look at this one. Okay. So our equations that we're dealing with are V bar equals Delta X over T. That's a Delta X and Delta X equals X two minus X one. Okay. So uh, the initial position, so that is my x1, travels at 3 meters per second. That's my velocity, my v-bar, okay, for 5 seconds. That's my time. What's the final position? x2, that is my question mark. Okay, so how I want to approach this is I want to start with this equation here. And, and we're going to say that v-bar, which is 3, equals delta x, which is what we're looking for, over the time, which is 5 seconds. So my displacement would equal uh, 15 meters. All right. And then we would use our second equation, um, which you could probably do this in your head. Uh, I'm gonna, I started at the 31 meter, and I travel 15 meters away from where I started uh, in the positive direction. Where am I going to end up? We're going to end up at the 46 meter mark but you can use this equation to do that so we would say delta x equals 15 equals x2 minus 31 and x2 equals 46 
So we can use we could use that equation, but that that's one we can probably just sort of reason through. And that is where we're going to call it uh, an, an end for the day. Do all of worksheet 2.1. Make sure you show work. Uh, that is important. If there if there's a problem where you're plugging numbers into your calculator, just for the rest of the school year, if there's a number that you're gonna you're gonna be doing math with. I want you to show me the numbers that you did the math with. Okay, show me your work. I show work when I do it on the screen. I want you to show work too. All right, good luck.